Using my imagination to create an illustration or, or a painting gives me so much joy. It's like living in an imaginary world, and I love that. So on the spot is my special guest, Vince Mancuso. Vince is an exceptional, multi-talented artist with 35 years of experience, not only in the commercial side of the arts, but also in painting, illustrating, and digital media. Vince, welcome to Stella's studio. It's great to have you here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Stella. Thank you for having me. I, I am so curious about your story as an artist. Can you tell me about, about it? Obviously, I was born to Italian immigrants, so it was a very uh, upsetting thing, you know, for my mother to, to have an artist. Their notion of the artist was a romantic one, mm -hmm. so it was very difficult for them to conceive of what kind of potential future might exist for somebody who would pursue that path. You know, anything in the world that is manufactured by human beings has to pass through the hands of an artist. I actually said that on the description of Stella's studio. Everything that you see around you was actually touched by an artist. It has to be, that's yes. right. Well, I started as a, as, a, as a boarder, as a storyboard artist in 1983. And it's, it's kind of an interesting, because I went to the Ontario College of Art. But of course, I come from Italian immigrants, you know, so I come from a blue collar background. You work a full day labor to get reward and return, you know, so if you plant a seed, it grows into a tomato and you've got something to eat. Across Canada, brown cows are joining together to fight for equality. What do we want? Brown cow rights! When do we want it? Brown cows know that just like white milk, chocolate milk has 15 essential nutrients kids need to help build strong, healthy bodies. Don't hate me because I'm delicious! You can help bring fair play and equal opportunity to brown cows everywhere. Two, four, six, eight! Chocolate milk is really great! Serve chocolate milk and make a brown cow proud. I'm a brown cow and I approve this message. Even though I had aspirations of becoming a painter, when I was at OCAD, you know, I would listen to the kids talk about, you know, the, the applied arts versus the fine arts and how, oh God, you know, you don't want to sell your soul, you know, to the applied arts because they're just more money oriented and so on. But their rationale was that, you know, they would work doing something else and then they would paint. Which of course, to a working class person, that just didn't make sense. Right. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and I remember there was a young man who was very talented, who was a year younger than me, friend, who got a scholarship. And uh, he ended up getting a scholarship to work for Doyle Dane and Birnbach, which is an American agency that had a franchise agency at uh, Young and Bloor. He had hundreds of markers, pads of blank paper. And I asked him, well, what do you do here all day? And he says, well, I draw. I draw all day long. I draw cars, I draw beautiful women, I draw handsome men, Your I draw products, right? And I, I yeah. do that too. I said, right? you draw, yeah, right? You draw for a living. And you get paid. Yeah. And I thought to myself, this seems like a good place to start. Right. So that's exactly what I did when I graduated. I ended up working for a multinational agency, Goodis, uh, Goodis Wolf Advertising. On the 40th floor, I had a studio looking south yes. towards the lake. And full of markers. Full of markers, full of pads of paper, and yeah, I was getting great. I was getting paid to draw great. all day long. Oh yes, that's wonderful. People just say, "Oh, you're so lucky you get paid to do drawings, right?" And it is true, but it's our it's our job. It's, you know this what? Is I brought, what we live for. I right? brought my mother, my mother, my grandmother, and my aunt to the office just to right? see your office. Yeah, just to, just to come down to the office because right? they had no idea, right? And I had moved out of the house when, when I was 18, mm -hmm. which was unheard of for okay. a young Italian boy. Their minds were just like, they couldn't believe it, right? That they were in this posh corporate uh, office, you know, on the 40th floor in a bank building, you know? And this was my, my studio, that right? That was your job. And that's where I was coming yes. every day. One of the most challenging things to do is storyboard art. So I was going to get better at drawing as a draftsman, you know, just to get stronger and, and more agile and more able, and then move on. But, you know, here I am 35 years later, and I have to say that, that um, the storyboard discipline to me is one very, very dear to my heart. It still remains a deep, deep passion, simply because it's so grounded in real drawing and visualizing and scope of communication. Besides doing that type of work, you're also like creating. 
just for fun. You have probably so many ideas that are not just all focused into story storyboards, right? No. It's just some of your own. Like you can create paintings that I've seen that are beautiful. I just read some. Someone said uh, something about you that says you paint from your gut. One of the fascinating things that that I took from storyboarding was the was the notion of working f directly from your imagination not looking to nature and replicate it, right. not looking to reference and copy it, but to allow the experiences that you have with people, places, things, to come up through your, your memories. And you know, the storyboard discipline, or the illustrative discipline, helps you develop the drawing skill to, to be fast, agile, and responsive to things from your imagination. So because I do that, often the images T tend to be edited or washed through my imagination and, mm -hmm. and my memories. Mm -hmm. And I find they tend to be more, more dramatic and more expressive because of that. It's really amazing to, uh, to talk about this with you because I'm also an artist and I yeah. also process information the same way you do. It's fantastic. It's like we can create our own world by the artistic ability we have of our imagination. Yeah. No, but when you were little, you, you like superheroes, didn't you? Yeah, that's in it, yeah. Yeah, and did you, did you draw Batman, Superman, all those? The, the interesting thing with the comic books uh, is to me that it was a, you know, I come from a Greco-Roman ancestry. So uh, things like the Iliad and Homer's Odyssey, right, and Greek mythology and Roman mythology plays a very big part. Mm -hmm. Hector and Achilles were just as significant Right, as Superman and Batman. Right. And basically, as a young child, I really didn't see much difference. Uh -huh. yeah, right? right. FX artists who created films like Jason and the Argonauts. Harry and the, yeah, that's right. And the uh, uh, Voyages of Sinbad. All of that pop so, cultural crossover. So you're talking about Jack Kirby and Norman Sanders? That's right. That's okay. right. Exactly. Okay. Right. So all of those people were influencing me, right. and I didn't even know who they were. When I would go yeah. to the corner store and buy Batman cards, you know, and you'd see the action paintings that were done by Norm Saunders. Uh -huh. His art was searing itself into my consciousness. I also saw you doing some urban sketching. Yes. You like, you like doing that on the street and drawing people? Well, and, yeah, and I mean, architecture. it's the background, right? right? It's the stage or it's the set upon which the dramas that you will eventually conceive will take place. So becoming familiar with that was very important. So I traveled around Canada a lot. Mm -hmm. So I've been to Newfoundland, New okay, Brunswick, okay. PEI, Vancouver, Whistler, because I wanted to learn about my country. Then what happened was in the summer times, I used to find that I couldn't paint very well. I wanted to, I tried, but it just wasn't inclined. And it was some senior artists like uh, Richard Gorman, who's a famous Canadian landscape artist, uh, Alex Cameron, David Bolduc. I was sharing a studio in the same building as them. And they were talking about outdoor painting uh, in watercolor. Okay. You know, like yes, the yes, tradition yes. of Winsler Homer and, right. and Turner. And they would go on painting trips. I was fortunate enough to be invited, you know. Mm -hmm. And what I found was this was a good way when you were in downtime to keep the brush active. And it's also learning. And learning. Every, every single time you make a new drawing, to me, is a new experience, yeah. too. Different setting, different colors, different lighting, different shadows. Uh, I'm really interested about all of that, and I really yeah. love it. Well, to me, the, you know, the, the, the artist as historical documenter. I worked a year for the CBC doing courtroom illustration. Yes, I saw some of those. One of the proudest, Very cool. One of the proudest things I ever did, because, mm -hmm. you know, talk about surrendering your ego and going in and just through drawing being witness. That, like war artists, right? Like Alex Colville and Varley from the Group of Seven, you know, they did that, right, uh -huh. in World War II. Um, and to me, that was incredibly noble and incredibly challenging. Yes, right? yes. To be on the spot, in the moment, trying to capture uh -huh. what was happening. Besides doing that, you also did, um, you do animatics? Right? I do, for yeah. commercial. part of advertising, yeah. Right, can you explain what that is? Because not everyone is familiar with animatics. Well, animatics are basically very simple animation. So where the traditional animation, for example, might have 24 drawings per second, animatics might have three frames per second. And so they are a very quick, sequential, timeline kind of presentation of drawings with basic movement. 
perfect mm -hmm. for uh, advertising or for film when they want to do market research or to show it to a client who might not necessarily be visually inclined. Okay, so it's like a comp but with animation. That's so, right. Okay. It has a timeline, mm -hmm. it has audio uh, voiceover and music. So literally you're creating a, 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 a pseudo experience of what the actual commercial as quickly and as cost effective as possible. Right. Did You did some good brands. Doritos. Yeah, did you we do did some Doritos. For that? Yeah, I worked for Scotiabank, worked for Ford, Toyota. I've worked with all the multinationals. And you also like to do live events. Yeah. You paint at live events that, with a brush and canvas, right. yeah, all that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That originally started, obviously, from working for the CBC, painting in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. that's and great. when the computer technology became like uh, desktop available, all the storyboard artists shifted to computer. The computer now was a tool that you could literally do a major multimedia projection through the use of cameras and projectors and re relative equipment. Drawing fast, drawing under pressure, that I could literally go on stage and through a computer draw in real time and use high-powered projectors to project it 20 feet by 30 feet, you know? And you do that with your brother? Yeah, right? my brother's a musician and we started, okay. well, to mark the millennium, to right. mark the, the millennium, we did our first self-produced show that had a 450 people at the Burton Auditorium mm -hmm. at York mm -hmm. University. And I painted live while he had a seven piece band and we did a three hour concert and we had continued to do that. You know, we did it for Bell World. I did it for Cadbury Adams. Tell me about the auto show where you were painting a Fiat. Chrysler had just bought Fiat. They were launching the Cinquecento, mm -hmm. the 500 in Canada, in the Canadian market. You know, once we started doing live performances like that, you know, not only did I do the Fiat thing, but that's how I got the gig on Queer as Folk, the television right. show. Okay, one thing brings another. Yeah, yeah. And you just have to be there and you just have to be open to new ideas that's and right. creativity. Yeah, it's, I, it's got the, I got the call because um, the writers had written into the script mm -hmm. a whole narrative about one of the characters who was using computers to draw with and paint because right. they were an aspiring artist on the show. And what they realized is they, they didn't have any talent that they knew that could actually do that live in real time. Yeah, nice. Right? But the art director on the show knew about my multimedia show and told the director within hours, the director was at my doorstep auditioning me. And he was saying to me, he says, so how does this work, right? Like how does, you know, and I, said, I was sitting in front of the computer and I said, well, you talk. And I just started drawing. And then he looked over on the screen and everything that he was describing, I had drawn. Yeah. Right? Which was part of my drawing yeah, that's, storyboard that's skill, so cool. right? I really love, 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 love. So that. he said, you're hired. <laughs> yeah, I showed up on the it? set the next day and for the rest of the well, second season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, nice. You were also in a movie. I, this I was. Guy, he's just full of yeah, surprises. I, 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 tell, tell, tell me I, all about documentary that. The documentary film? Yes, the documentary film made in Italy. You know, in Canada, there really, there was no precedent for the Italian community or a lot of the ethnic groups. We're talking about the late 80s, early 90s. But inevitably, there were uh, quite a few of us, unbeknownst to each other, that were working and creating a narrative that represented that ethnic group. The way I launched my career was in honor of that, I painted a, a, a massive painting that was eight feet uh, by five feet, that was a St. Christopher crossing the Atlantic to commemorate immigration to this country. Because of that, I got invited to Italy to do a public sculpture by the oh. municipal government. So where is that painting now? That painting exists at the Dahlia Social Cultural Center. When I became the brunt of a lot of jokes, you know, like a lot of people would come out to me, hey, what's the matter with you, kid? You know, what do you think you are, Michelangelo or something, you know? Or it would be like, what do you think you are, Picasso? You know, what's the matter with you? You know, those guys were geniuses. You know, this kind of attitude, you know. And, uh, and then, of course, from people who cared about you, there was a lot of concern, you know, and sadness and crying and lamenting, you know, and it's like he's lost. What's the matter with him? Is he on drugs? You know, all this kind of thing. And, you know, really, it was the only recourse I had was to leave because... There was no other way. There was just no other way. If I had to do what it was that I wanted to do and believed I should do, I had to actually leave because it was just, it was incomprehensible for people that, that you know, how would you even begin to address the problem of becoming an artist? To have a son like an artist, you know, I think it's a, 
really great. It's uh, beautiful. But the only trouble, the only trouble is uh, my my son works so hard, but I, I still I don't understand the work the he's doing. <laughs> for one way I may, but for the other way I still, you know, that's true. You know, and the next thing I knew, and the NFB did this film, you know, and uh, it was great because it, it put us on a Nash stage. It's a beautiful film. Do you enjoy it? Yes, yeah. very much so, very much. Now, would you like to be interviewed by Supergirl? Of course. Let me go get it. All right. You actually know her? Hi, Vince. I'm Supergirl. Wow. I didn't realize you had alter ego, Supergirl. <laughs> what a privilege and an honor. See, an omnipotent human. I mean, a alien, actually. Well, you know, it's a long, long flight from there to here. <laughs> but I made it just to come and meet you. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. I'm honored. Yes, because I love your art. I've seen it all over my planet. I love it. Thank you. Yes. I, mean, I think my sons are going to be thrilled that Supergirl actually likes my art. And so I know you also teach other students about all the art that you do, right? I do. I teach. What uh, classes do you teach? I, te I created the curriculum for Drawing 1 and Drawing 2 at the School of Design, Georgia Brown College. Can I go to your classes? Of course. Supergirl can go anywhere I go. Oh, that's so cool. I think I'm going to tag on to Vince from now on, make yeah. sure he's safe. I didn't realize you liked to draw. I love to draw. Wow. I have a favorite drawing I like to do, and it's Batman. Really? Yeah, I got this thing about Batman. So do I. <laughs> so do I. You know, there are some really nice paintings that you've done with superheroes. Yes. Can we see them? Sure. Let the world know. I, I think they're great. I think superheroes are the modern mythology, right, of our times. And why did you end up with that concept? Uh, my mother died. The vision came to me. Uh, I started seeing my mother as, uh, you know, the Queen of England, kind of superimposed her into the motif of our, uh, the English uh, monarchy. My brother was pushing me to do an art performance again. We did it at uh, Grano uh, restaurant to celebrate the Day of the Dead. He wanted me to paint a painting live, and I conceived of this image where our family, our entire family was represented. I, I did a big, big show last summer at Designer's Walk. You know, there's one, for example, um, All Eyes on Us which has a massive bear. Yes, I was wondering about And it actually has a hockey one. goalie who's like mm -hmm. in a Saint Sebastian naked with arrows stuck in him. Mm -hmm. And then to the right, there's Batman, and to the left, there's Superman. And then we have uh, Chairman Mao, and we have Uncle Sam on the other side. And of course, this was uh, in homage to the 72 Summit series when Canada played Russia. As a young child, the act of drawing was like a superpower. Wasn't that having like magic? Exactly. That's how I feel. Exactly. I yeah. actually don't know what's gonna come exactly. out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think my soul is painting for me. It That's directs how I you, feel. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I'm part of all kinds of figurative art groups. The ones that I'm most proud of is the international storyboard artists. Like a lot of my friends are guys in California and th you know who are working on Marvel uh -huh. and John Wick and you know which is a part of the industry mm -hmm. that that I am continuing to work in. I am so thrilled to have uh, Vince here with me today, and I hope you really enjoyed it as well, right, Vince? If oh, we need I to had a contact great you, on my website uh, vincemancuso.com, and you can email me at vince at vincemancuso.com. Okay, just message me. Supergirl, before you fly away, I just wanted to give you this drawing so that you had something to remember me by. Wow, that's magnificent. Thank you, Vince. I'll treasure it forever and take it to my planet. Oh, I'm honored. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm always inspired by events such as Fun Expo, Comic Con, but I am also inspired by Vince Mancuso to make more drawings and have more fun. So I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did, and I have to fly now. See ya. You want me to fly, actually fly? Because I can't. <laughs> you got it?